so welcome back. Um, after the introduction given by Etin, um, I would like to start my patterns and practices talk about Alka. Um, but before I do so, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Wilhelm Denkamp. I'm an architect at InfoSport. I've been working there for about 11 years now. I live in a city called Hyderabad. I'm married, have two kids. Soon I'll have one dog and be a teacher complete. Uh, if you want to reach me, uh, here are my handles. And with that, uh, I have the uh, following agenda, a real-world scenario, so I'll, I'll talk about my use case and the application we built using Arca. <coughs> and after that, um, there's not really a storyline, but there are some topics I'd like to discuss with you, see things we found during development, during proof of concept and build, during, uh, we found uh, during building the application. Um, the application we built is, is called the Polis Clause. The Polis Clause is an uh, insurance overview for every person in Holland. And um, that's the potential of 10 million users. And an average of six insurances per user, makes, that makes 60 million insurances. Um, that's it, those insurances may, due to uh, law, may not be, be stored in the database, but must real-time be queried uh, when the user logs on to the system. So that introduces a slight problem. And um, the requirements say the peak is about 500 users per second. And um, those insurances are stored by 400 insurance web services at different insurance companies. Different levels of quality. With different levels of quality. So and please be always available. So that makes uh, quite a hard set of requirements. Um, we use ACA for this, and I would like to tell you tonight how um, how we did that. Um, before uh, I continue, I would like to make uh, 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 some things clear about ACA, some things you really need to know. Um, as Edwin just told, and, uh, there are actors in the system, and uh, every actor has a mailbox. The mailbox you can think of as Q, in memory, in memory Q. When you have an actor ref, the actor ref sends the messages into the queue. Those messages are stacked, and every time an actor becomes free, those messages are pushed into the actor. When you have different actors, you don't communicate this way, you communicate this way. That's why you don't have a reference to an actor, you have an actor ref, and the actor ref is to the mailbox of the actor. Something uh, to keep in mind. And um, that said, um, the first thing I'd like to talk about is ask versus tell. As, as, as said before, actors communicate, and they communicate by sending each other messages, and they can send each other messages in two different ways. <laughs> they, can, um, they can tell something, and tell it like fire and forget. I send you a message, I'm not interested in the response, just here's your message, and um, the other pattern is uh, ask, and ask is send and receive. Send your message, waiting for a reply. Um, one thing to know about ask, you have to pitfall, is only use it when absolutely necessary. You pay a performance price when using ask, because you get returned, uh, in the .NET world you get returned a task, in the, in the Scala world you get returned the future. That comes with a price. Small price, but in a highly scalable environment, the sum of all those small prices make one big penalty you pay. Um, ask has also a timeout pet, uh, an explicit timeout. And that makes it really hard to debug. Especially when, when you have a large hierarchy, and this is a very small hierarchy, but you see the sample underneath. Um, this timeout must be bigger than that timeout, must be bigger than that timeout, and otherwise, you really run, run into trouble. Um, always try to use tell. And what had been just uh, a tool, uh, you, for, and, and you get a reference, once, uh, once you get an, uh, an, uh, a message, you get a reference to the parent, to the actor that sent that message to you. So you can reply with a tell to the originating actor. This is a better pattern than the ask pattern. Um, as as uh, said before, um, actors, um, can be used in design patterns, and when you search on the net, there are 
many sites on the design patterns you can use in Akka. This is the design pattern we used uh, uh, for the uh, for the Polis clouds. What we do is we do this per request. A request comes in, it's translated into an actor. The pattern is called also called an, an, an actor per request and is uh, divided into sub-actors for each one actor for each um, web service that might be called. Once it's done, one, once the response is in, the actors are killed. So it scales up, it scales down. The, the actors are really short-lived in this system and that makes uh, one person very <coughs> angry and that's the garbage collector. He has, has, a lot of, has a lot of work to do in, in, with this pattern. Um, another pattern that you can build uh, using Arca is <coughs> sub So you create some actors, and those actors tell some other actor by actor selection, I'm interested in this kind of messages, and when you get them, please send them to me. And just as we discussed before, you can this is a, just a normal uh, object-oriented uh, design pattern. You easily implement it using Arca. Um, another uh, uh, design pattern used for this is the uh, delegate risky operation. So we have, an, uh, we have an actor that has sent a message. That actor probably has state. You don't want to lose that state before you risk your risky operation. Risky operation uh, may cause your, ask your, uh, your actor to crash. So you delegate that operation to an actor you, speci you specifically create for that operation, to perform that operation and you get either a success or you get a failure. And with the success you get the answer. Another thing we just talked about is the time mark pattern. You give an actor and uh, uh, you can set a time mark, you can set a message. Uh, you uh, perform an operation, you set a timeout, and when that timeout uh, uh, time is reached, the actor sends a message to itself into its own queue. So the timer is set, the timer uh, time out left message is pushed into this queue. So you know the time out has been reached and you can perform any operation uh, you want to do that. Um, when you perform and um, there's, there's not there's not there are two golden rules using Parker. One is you should use always you should you should use uh, immutable messages, and the other message, uh, the other golden rule is you should never block an actor. So, um, in this case, we built a proof of concept using Akka.net. In the .net page, we were returned. Uh, we performed an ASIC operation, <coughs> and we awaited that operation. When you await an oper uh, async operation, you block an actor. It's not something you should do. What happened is we could do about 13 messages per second. When we resolved that using this pattern, the part two pattern, we could do about 5,000 messages per second. So. And what the part uh, two messages, uh, uh, part two uh, does is, you see the same uh, mailbox as I use here up on the board. The mailbox uh, receives a message, is pushed into the actor, the actor performs an operation, an async operation in this case. We should not await the result of that async operation, instead we should send the result of that async operation back into the mailbox of the same actor or another actor. It can also be possible. And this uh, keeps the actor from blocking. Um, something has been just discussed. There are, uh, um, so you actually put a task into... Uh, not the task, the result of the task. Okay. When the task is completed... But then you're still awaiting the actor, right? No, because you don't put the await keyword in, you just say performance operation the when it gets back. The framework does the await for you. Uh, yeah. You translate the result into a message and puts it in the message box, the mailbox. Ah, okay. So you pipe it to another actor, that's called the pipe to pipe. So you actually offload waiting for the result to the framework and you don't have to think about it anymore. Yeah, okay, I was just wondering how it went uh, over a network, but um, that's being done locally, uh, you do an await and then the result is sent over the network. Actually, that's true. And um, every time you think about 
uh, doing threading or something with threads or task or features yourself in Akka, an alarm bell, alarm bell should go off because Akka handles that for you. And every time you do that for Akka, you're probably wrong. And that's what did this cost us a lot of trouble before we found out about the, the little pipe to uh, extension method. Um, and there's another thing in Akka called routers. And routers are actors that can group other actors. So I can send a message to a router, and there are two types of routers, so pools and groups. A pool of router is a um, a pool is an, a router that creates actors and has supervision of them. A group is a router that you can put actors into. You can create your own actors and put them into a group. And just as Edwin discussed earlier, there are different types of strategies for dispatching mes messages within those uh, groups. There's the round robin, so there's one, two, three, four, it just goes uh, round. The broadcast, one message comes in, it's sent to all uh, actors within the group. There's a random, that's enough. Consistent hashing, so you can send a message to the same actor based on a key, on a hashing algorithm, uh, on the hashing you uh, uh, invented. Expressal partitioning schemes. And you have to scatter, <laughs> scatter gather first, because this is a beautiful name. But what it does is it sends messages out, and the first one to respond is the one that wins. And the smallest mailbox, and that's actually perfect for uh, load balancing. And it, it searches the actor with the smallest mailbox. It's the least work to do. The message is sent to that actor, and uh, that actor performs uh, the operation or receives a message. Now, just as I said before, tips and tricks and making mutable messages. Um, stopping an actor is it's also uh, 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 there are three ways to uh, a pitfall. There are three ways to stop an actor. You can use context print stop, and that means that the actor is stopped after it completes the current message. There's the kill message that kills the actor, but uh, after it completes the current uh, 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 the, after it completes the current message, but an exception is thrown afterwards. And there's the poison pill. And the poison pill is a message that is sent to the actor that's put on top in the message box. So it, it first uh, handles all the messages that are currently in the box, and then the actor is killed. Um, and uh, one thing um, that's uh, good now is uh, some sort of more thing put a log actor in your. Don't log in your actors itself, but put a log in it and send all your message, log messages to your log actor. And you can do that with whatever you want, write to disk, write to uh, database. Uh, one thing to be aware of is that your console is probably the, sl the slowest part of your system or your SSD out. So you should only log one into, well, I'll show you in a minute, but our console was blocking our output actually. Um, and one thing, uh, a good, uh, good trip, uh, uh, tip is to design your system up from. So take a pen and the other board and just draw it because it makes it uh, much easier to, uh, uh, to, to implement. Um, there can also be uh, another small problem and that is uh, back pressure. So when messages start coming in faster then you can process them. And there is a pattern for that to complete that and what happens is the following, uh, a message comes in, handled by the actor, sent to the database, but database operation or any operation or web service called probably slow. So what happens? The mailbox starts filling up. And you keep pushing messages and a certain amount of time an out of memory error will occur. And your actor will crash and if you haven't chosen the right strategy or uh, persistence you will lose all your messages. So um, you will need to design, if that's, this is something that can occur in your use case you will need to design something with your actors to solve this. And that's called uh, design for back pressure. Uh, back pressure that's instead of pushing messages into an actor's mailbox, you pull messages into, into your own mailbox. And this works as follows then. We have a request actor that push mess pushes messages into a queue. So this is the elastic part of our architecture. This makes that our architecture can scale and can handle uh, multiple uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, requests. Then there's a master node. Those th that node uh, reads from the queue 
Um, and uh, that note, uh, uh, there are worker notes. And uh, those work, worker notes report to the master, give me some work. The master takes a message from the queue, pushes it to the worker. After the worker is done, for example, storing something in the database, uh, it reports back to the master that it's done and give me work and it pushes and it starts working. And, and this pattern uh, makes that you can never blow up your active system. And if you want to, you can even uh, tell the uh, uh, originating request actor that something is wrong by putting an active reference in your messages. Um, it's also a big point. The active reference can be passed to other actors. Yeah, that's something that's especially in this, in this pattern. Um, what I want you, uh, to show you is an is an, uh, an uh, the one question. The queue is also some element from Reckon? No, no, this, this is, is, is also this is uh, this is a an uh, own uh, no, no queue. Okay, so you put something in a queue. Yes, but it, it's just possible to it's uh, possible to uh, uh, implement an own queue for the mailbox of an actor. So you can implement your own queue or. Uh, but that's not what you meant here. It's no, that's not what I meant here. This, this is an, uh, an actual queue or queuing system. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. what's the difference with uh, that solution and using a router instead of a uh, queue? I mean, could yeah, router I can, uh, router, uh, the, the mailbox of router can fill up uh, uh, okay. overflow. Okay. And this is preventing the mailboxes of the actors from overflowing. Yeah. Um, so um, maybe it's better to draw it. Uh, what, 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 do you, what we build for the, for the postcards when the, the users come in, um, we have a request. Uh, Coming into, this, uh, uh, coming into the system, we create an, uh, a request of an actor specific for that incoming request, and uh, that actor looks into uh, the body of the, the, uh, the request, and the request has some sort of uh, insurance, a list of insurance company that should be queried. So for every uh, insurance company, we create a specific message, and uh, we create an equal amount of child actors. So what happens is, like this comes from the web shard is in front of the anchor system that has all the information about the user that has logged onto the application. Right? Yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> um, those messages are sent to all those actors. Those actors uh, uh, query the, the, uh, the different uh, web services. And after the after the uh, results come in, they uh, report it back to the actor that this back actor holds the state of all the of, of the request that was coming in and sends it back to the requesting uh, uh, service in this case. Is it then not a really uh, long running actor or something? Just just, just to wait. Just for the request. And then mm -hmm. what we did is um, by using the, the timeout we, uh, we I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm. I think we say, okay, um, insurance companies, you have uh, 1.5 seconds to respond to our request. If you are not back within that second, forget it. Yeah. We, re we will report to the user that, uh, that that you weren't available or had something else to do. So we. Within this actor, we uh, implemented the, the, the timeout pattern. Mm -hmm. So the timeout, the message comes in. Oh, <coughs> timeout has elapsed. Report back. You don't do retries. Re hmm? You don't do retries. No, not within. We have to respond within two seconds. We have no time to. to maybe in a, in, a, in the future, but um, not at this moment. And what we do is uh, we say we, uh, say we got uh, an answer from the top uh, three web servers. We have those answers. Then the timeout occurs, we send back those answers and show them to the user. So did you use the ask button here? The ask button was used, uh, good question. The ask button was used from the, uh, uh, from the web server. This is uh, actually, this was, uh, um, uh, in this case, this is uh, uh, ASP.net uh, web server. Mm -hmm. We ask an actor, so we, we, need, we need a reference to that actor, so we need to ask him, we need a response, actually, we need the data that came in from the, and this was done using the tell pattern. Because we told an actor, make this call, and after the actor receives a message, we, we, we do a tell back to the, to the parent, to the sender. Did you implement the timeout yourself then? Uh, mm, or the timeout is just set, after, after all those messages have been created, we just do a set timeout. Mm -hmm. 
and after the timeout is elapsed and the message is pushed into our in the mailbox of this actor. Yeah, so it's one timeout for all the services. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, 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 that's correct. Huh. And after we had all uh, we stepped into all the, the pitfalls that uh, one can step into, um, uh, we came up with this and I think it was because what I, what I do here is I uh, start eight insurance company web services. And so this is the, an emulation of the actual product, uh, all running on one machine. Um, if someone spots his own policy in the demo, then he gets a prize or it was yeah, you get a flag. Um, and what we do then is we have a load generator. So we emulate a, a, a lot of users on the front end. Uh, on that side of the web, uh, the web website, um, this is the, the website running the web service running at this point. So we're sending a, a lot of messages in, and when we um, start with that messages, here's some uh, log messages. You see it handling about thousand messages per uh, insurance company. With a total of eight running, that makes eight thousand uh, messages per second. Scaling up and cleaning up the actors. So every request is this pattern to eight uh, web services. On one machine, no clustering, just in one actor system. Without creating one single thread yourself? Absolutely not. Uh, it's just running uh, a demo and stabilized, but it's about a about thousand uh, requests per second per uh, insurance company, so it makes eight thousand per second. Um, and uh, the load generator is also on the same machine, so I think that's something totally uh, something there. Um, yeah, uh, something we, 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 we still have to do is is actually designed for back pressure, so we're, 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 when an extremely high use load would come in at any moment, we probably would fill up the, the, the message, uh, the mailbox of the, of the, the web service, so we need to implement the, the back pressure pattern for, for handling, making sure that we're handling things at a, at a maximum rate at one point. Um, and I think that's about it. Yeah. Any questions? Uh, back pressuring uh, pattern. You use existing queue technology for that or something, or probably I, I think go as a rule is use something like a, with with, with persistence like a, a gravity queue. Probably gravity queue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I'm a little um, bit worried about the message queue. So what happens when the total system fails and then? Yeah, uh, you have to persist it, maybe, but no, in, in, uh, in, in case of the, in, in this use case, we will, we will no persistence. Uh, it's yeah. not allowed by law because the uh, the sensitive data in the messages actually, and the, 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 the data may not be stored. Yeah. So, and I don't think there's um, this use case allows for storage of messages because it's uh, yeah, it, it's, the user logs in, we request the data, we show the data to the user. And if it's not there, you can ask the user to refresh his data by giving him a button or something, but not storing the data in, the, in, the, in any store. Okay. And um, I currently have uh, like a service bus architecture for mm -hmm. one of, of our systems. If I like to use those same service buses only with ACA, is that possible? Or? Uh, I like to have persistence That's between case. my actors. That's a very broad question, sorry. Yeah. I guess uh, for, um, I'm not really 100% sure, but I think that you can create your own implementation or use an implementation for your mailbox, for your mailbox implementation. Yeah, that's for, right. for your actor. So you can you can uh, use a proprietary queuing mechanism for your uh, yeah. for your mailbox, and then you have to implement some kind of an interface and use that system for queuing messages. There's an existing uh, plugin for uh, Azure Service Bus yeah. that I know of. And I believe there are also plugins for RabbitMQ and some of other uh, okay. plugins. Yeah. 
in this case, why would you want to implement uh, an external queue for back pressure and not scale out? So that you could handle the requests. Yeah, good question. Because this way I can make sure that I never uh, reach the maximum of the system. Or it would be my queue. And when we scale out, there can be a maximum of my system. And I can scale out so big that it probably will never happen. But we'll pay a lot. I think we'll pay a lot for the for the data center in that case. Um, in this in this case, the the, the flexi uh, flexibility comes from my queue. Yeah. As much as my queue can handle, the uh, queue is it a rabbit or it could be a database or it could be a server. <coughs> and it must be almost infinite. I think. Oh yeah. Yeah, with the cost that some messages would take forever because they To be honest, I probably would would. would uh, talking about speaking about monitoring, I would probably monitor my queue, and when that monitor queue starts to fill up, I need to some scale up something in the yeah. backend. So, 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 so that's uh, there's something, some intelligence, maybe a person in the first uh, yeah. in the first release. But after, <laughs> if it happens a lot, you would scale up and down depending on the size of your queue. I don't want to be very hard thinking. A couple of Docker images, Docker containers. And okay, that's it. Thank you. Yeah, if you want to go uh, next month, you've got to stay too much. No, sorry. Yeah, it's okay. 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 Okay